In this lecture, we will try to identify the main drivers for hotel business model. This will help us immensely later on with modeling it in Excel. So let's first try to estimate the, the margin after variable cost for one hotel. So this will obviously require us to model revenues. And those revenues depend on two things. So number of nights sold and then the average daily rate. So in other words, how much of uh, revenues we are generating per one room. Then if we would like to go a little bit deeper into the average daily rate, we could divide it into two elements. So the average price per one night and additional revenue per one night. Now, when it comes to the nights sold, this depends on the occupants rate. So in other words, what percentage of the rooms available have guests inside and then also available nights, which uh, in turn we can also make dependent on the number of days when the hotel is open and number of rooms we've got. Now, in order to get to the margin after variable cost per hotel, we obviously need to model the variable costs. And here we have the following elements. So cost of cleaning the rooms, cost of breakfast, if we provide it, and booking transaction fees. Now, when it comes to the cost of breakfast, we can model it through the night sold and assume certain cost per one night sold. Then when it comes to cost of cleaning, again, we can use night sold, we have some cost of cleaning per one night sold. And finally, booking transaction fees will simply depend on the revenue and it will be percentage of the revenues we got. Now, when it comes to how we reach from here to the EBITDA, we obviously have to account for fixed cost. And fixed cost on, of the hotel without the depreciation will depend on the following things. So the fixed cost related to space, labor costs, so in other words, people and other fixed costs. And we can model fixed costs related to space simply by looking at the space we occupy and then having certain cost fee per square meter. When it comes to people, it depends on number of people and average wage. And other costs, we can either model in relation to space or we can assume them to be just an amount. Now, once we've got the, the fixed cost and variable cost, we can obviously get to the beta per hotel. So we take the margin of the variable cost that we have shown previously, and then we deduct from that the fixed cost of the hotel. And in this way, we get the average beta per hotel. However, since we want to model for a chain of hotels, we obviously have to account for the head office and have more than one hotel. So we take the average that we have just estimated, we multiply by number of hotels, and in this way, we get to the beta on hotel level. Now we have to obviously deduct the head office costs and this will mean that we have to uh, use uh, some drivers to account for them as well. And the simplest way to approach this is first of all to look at the rent, which will be one of the biggest uh, costs and people and others cost put in one group. People we can obviously model by looking at the number of people and the average wage and the rent. It's again the number of square meters or square foot and certain cost fee per one square meter. So that's in short how we were able to identify the main drivers for the hotel. Just as a summary, we have started by modeling the margin after variable costs for one hotel. Then we accounted for the fixed costs on hotel level and we got the EBITDA on hotel level. And finally, we estimated using the following drivers, the head office costs to get to the total EBITDA generated by the chain. And this is roughly what we're going to do in Excel. We're going to use the drivers we have talked about in order to reflect the logic of this business. So let's move to the case study where we will model a chain of hotels.